Hey there, peeps. We got Newton's laws of motion and forces and strategies and how to analyze these dynamic situations where we have pushes and pulls on an object and we want to see what its resulting motion is. And these four steps will help us with that strategy. So the first thing, of course, we're going to create free body diagrams, FBDs, which are vector diagrams that show a picture of which way each force is pulling relative to a chord system. Because we have a chord system, it's possible that if forces act at angles, then we may need to resolve forces that act on uh, that act at angles and resolve their x, y components. So figure out how much of that force is going in the x direction, how much of that is going in the y direction, because that's going to help us with our analysis when we actually write Newton's second law equations. They look like this. It's based on f net equals ma. Well, the net force is basically the sum of all the forces in a given direction. This symbol here is sigma, capital letter sigma. Yes, another Greek letter from their alphabet. Absolutely. So capital sigma, and it, re it, it actually stands for sum of. So it's a mathematical expression. You may see this in math class as well when you're going to um, add a particular list of numbers. You may use sigma as the sum of. So it's the sum of the forces in the x direction equal m times ax, the acceleration in the x direction. And the sum of the forces in the y direction equal mAy. So in some cases, we may have to write two sets of equations, one for the x direction and one for the y direction. And then the last thing we'll do is solve for any quantities needed. That way, once we write the equations, we'll have all the variables that we need there, or if not, we'll substitute them in and then solve for the um, quantity that we're actually looking for. So I'm going to give you two examples coming up, two quick examples, one with the vertical and one with the horizontal type motion, and they will demonstrate these four steps in action. So here we go. And so here we go with example one. We have a toolbox that's hoisted upwards. The toolbox has a mass of 10 kilograms, and we're told that the hoisting force, it's actually tension in this case, you can imagine maybe a rope or a chain that's pulling upwards, um, has a constant force of 120 newtons. What do we want to know? We want to figure out the acceleration of the box, so that's going to tell us something about its motion. Step one, free body diagram. Here are the force vectors. This is a hor it's rather a vertical, a vertical problem. There's no horizontal uh, vectors that are involved in this situation. So, of course, um, what we're going to do is model the object as a point over here. Okay, so this little kind of tiny ball, that's going to re represent the object. So when we create free body diagrams, we're going to start with that as the uh, representation of the object, okay, in the model. And what we have is a force downward, that's the force of gravity. Here I've also created our coordinate system that says the positive direction, the positive y direction is upwards. and Immediately, I can start filling in some of this stuff. I know that um, the force of gravity is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity, mg, and 10 times 9.8 is 98 newtons. So that's what it is downwards. We also have another force, the hoisting force, delivered by tension. And force of tension is going to be 120 newtons from given information. So this is our free body diagram. How does it help us? Well, it enables us to write the Newton second law equations that will help us solve it. There are no angles present, so we don't have to worry about that right now. Other examples that we do later with more sophistication, of course, will have angles, but for now, we don't. So in step three, the sum of the forces in the y direction equal force tension in the positive direction. So I'm taking this force and I'm adding it to this force in the y direction. The thing is, force of gravity is a negative force because it is downward relative to our core system. So what I have here is force tension minus force gravity. That's the sum of the forces. This comes from the free body diagram. Over here, we know that Newton's second law says the sum of the force in the y direction equals mass times the acceleration in the y direction. That's Newton's second law. So both these are valid expressions, but they're coming at it from different perspectives, and we want to combine them together. That, that's what we do. So here it is. Here's the combination. I'll get over on this side. Force tension minus force gravity, this part, 
equals m times a y, mass times the y acceleration, because this equals that. We put them together. Well, we want to solve for acceleration. This is the only unknown in the uh, situation here. We know tension, gravity, and mass. So here it goes. A y is f tension minus f gravity divided by m. You do the algebra, it's pretty simple. Essentially, all you're doing is dividing by m. Here it is. Now we plug in the numbers after uh, this is isolated, so it's been solved, and we get 120 newtons minus 98 over 10 kilograms. Boom, the result is 2.2 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of the toolbox upwards. Now let's do an example on the horizontal plane. <laughs> All right, so now let's take that same 10 kilogram toolbox and instead of hoisting it vertically, let's push it horizontally. Okay, and now when we push it, it's going to experience a resistive force uh, called a frictional force. Now, if I rub my hands like this, I can feel that there's some resistance there. All right, anytime you slide on the floor, any type of interaction between two surfaces means that there's friction. We'll get into friction in more detail, but all you need to know is that sliding creates a resistive force in the direction, of, or actually against the direction of motion. So if you're going in the x direction, positive x, guess what? Frictional force is in the negative x direction. If you're headed in the negative x direction, guess what? That force is in the positive x direction. It always will be opposite of the direction of motion. Okay, so we're told that the push should accelerate this box at a rate of 0.5 meters per second squared. And so we wanna find out how much force is necessary for that push the pushing force. So I've got the free body diagram here. This is the coordinate system. Up is the positive direction for y, and to the right is positive x. Acceleration, 0.5 meters per second squared. So um, I know that in the down direction is the force of gravity. It's the same weight as it was before. Mass times gravity gives us weight of 98 newtons. The force of gravity is down. And then the Newton's third law response to that force, of course, is the force normal, all right? It says, ah, I'm gonna support you with some force as well because you're resting on a surface. We'll figure out how much that is a little bit later. In the horizontal direction, we have force applied. That's the pushing force. Applied is a generic term that we can use to characterize any maybe pushing or pulling force that's creating the uh, change in motion here. And here's the resistive force, force friction. It is 15 newtons this way. So let's figure this out. No angles are present, so we go right to step three. The, for, uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction is force normal minus force gravity, because force normal is in the positive direction, force gravity in the negative direction, equals m a y. Now that equals zero, because we recognize that if it's resting on the surface, unless it's pulled upwards in any way, um, this object is going to stay on that surface vertically, so it's not going to be accelerating the vertical direction. Therefore, a y is zero, okay? And if this is zero, then what we learn is that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. So in this specific case here, where there are no angles or anything else, we see that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. In other words, the surface is responding to the weight of the object and saying, I gotcha, pushing back with exactly the same amount, 98 newtons, all right? Now, in this case, it's not gonna help us solve for this problem. Sometimes we will need it when we get more sophisticated and learn more about the frictional force. Um, so we can kind of go right ahead to the sum of the forces in the x direction. And that's the applied force minus the frictional force equals m times the acceleration in the x direction. All right, now this is easy to solve. I'm gonna solve for force applied. So I just add force and friction to both sides. Whew. So here we go. Force applied equals max plus the force of friction. Let's think about this for a moment. Let's say we created this miracle surface and there was no friction, okay? A hoverboard kind of thing or something so slippery that there's no friction whatsoever so that this is zero newtons over here. This term would be zero. All that would say is F net equals MA. So if you actually had a surface like that or well, if you're in space, that's pretty close. If you push an object, um, it's gonna accelerate without any resistance. Therefore, um, what we would have is force applied equals MAX. So you gotta imagine that if you're going to push it against friction, it's gonna be a bit higher than just accelerating the object with no resistance. So you gotta take that into account, it's two pieces. This is the, the stuff that's accelerating the object and then this is the resistance over here. Two pieces together, 
give you the force applied. Let's plug it in. Okay, now we've got it solved for our variable, which is force applied, 10 kilograms times 0.5 meters per second squared, five plus 15, it's 20 newtons. Okay, so these are pretty simple examples, but I think they're really demonstrative of um, the types of situations that we can handle and the, the basic process of uh, creating free body diagrams and um, checking for angles and writing the Newton's second law equations and then solving for the quantities of interest. That's it. We can do this and we will. Morad, out.